Hello everybody, welcome uh, to 2022 Nintendo. February Direct happened yesterday, so I figured now about almost 24 hours removed, we'd review it. Uh, spoilers, I'm a massive fan of the Nintendo Wii, so I made out like a bandit yesterday. <laughs> I'm very happy with that Direct. Uh, we're gonna get through it all, of course. There's reactions up on the channel. Had some lag issues with the stream, but the audio is there if you want to hear myself and Omar react to certain things. Uh, mainly the thing we're about to dive into to start off, and I can't believe I'm going to be praising this Direct for everything it did, but opening with something that crushed my heart. I'm talking like Scorpion... Like, all, fist through the chest, grab the heart, rip it out, visceral bloodborne attack, squishing it. When I saw uh, Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem this year is going to be a Warriors game. I, man, talk about the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. <laughs> uh, I love Fire Emblem. I love Fire Emblem so much. I was hungry and waiting for a new Fire Emblem this year. And I was anticipating it based off the rumors. And I was going so far as to not pick up Triangle Strategy, a game I am looking forward to and we'll get to in a bit uh, because I didn't want to burn out to prep for Fire Emblem. But now that's not a problem, so I can play Triangle Strategy without a sweat in the world. So, I said at the top, made out like a bandit because fan of the Nintendo Wii, uh, which is kind of the case. We'll get through it all. But uh, before we get to the big dogs, I'd like to shout out a few things that uh, I thought showed well in the direct. Uh, live Alive, Live Alive, Live Alive, that RPG looks cool. It looks like a more appealing Octopath Traveler, where I think this game's like 20 hours long, and it's a bunch of vignettes from a bunch of different RPG characters across different regions. That is the appeal and hook of Octopath, but Octopath is super long, and the story, I, from what I hear, is not that interesting. So, uh, Alive Alive looks cool, whatever it's called. Uh, well, maybe check that out. That's July. What else did they show? Splatoon 3. I haven't played Splatoon before. Uh, that was a weird trailer. Disturbing almost. I could barely pay attention to what was happening because that music. Uh, like, like good disturbing though. Good weird. Good, good, good strange. Um, that was solid. Kingdom Hearts. Boo for Cloud version. Got to hear some of the sweet, sweet music though. So that was nice. But overall, I do think the Direct was paced very, very well. No real lulls at all. Uh, just a lot of really cool, great things. Uh, some surprises for me. Some things that I was maybe reserved on, but surprised me with how they were shown. Specifically, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I don't think you can see this, but there's a Kirby game back there. Squeak Squad on the DS. Love that one. It's the only Kirby game I've beaten. But Forgotten Land looks very, very good. I love 3D platformers. And the the car Carby, that was that was a moment. Internet took that and ran with it. That was that was big. Um the mother base sort of thing that you're building up, Waddle D Mother Base, is super cool as well. I'm uh, very excited to probably dive into that one, because March is pretty light for me. Um but yeah, I think that was the, the gist of the fun things. Triangle strategy as well, let's, let's go off on that. Um, triangle strategy, I thought, again, showed well. It's a beautiful looking game. I'm hungry for a tactics game. That was the big takeaway this year. Sorry, this direct, that uh, it's the year of tactics. It's the year of strategy RPGs and Wii games. So for me, I'm eating well this year on Nintendo. Triangle strategy looks cool. I did download the demo, I have not dove into that yet this is the first square enix extended demo transfer progress to main game thing that might actually get me because i tried the demo for triangle strategy last year and i really did like it but uh again i was i was reserved for this release because of fire emblem but now not the case so excited to sink my teeth into it hopefully it grabs me enough that i actually want to pick up the whole game when it launches in march uh the other strategy game that really stood out to me in my year without a Fire Emblem, is Advance Wars. Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp, I thought showed very well. Looks great. Looks 
maybe not as complex as I'd like it to be. It looks a little more simplistic than Fire Emblem does. I do love the art style though, so that's great. Uh, April 8th is the date on that one, I think. My birthday is the 9th, so maybe I just scoop it up. But I do wish that they on the eShop would release them separately because it's a franchise I haven't dove into yet. 60 bucks is a lot for two of those. I would like to just get an experience with the first one for 30. I think they did that with Bayonetta, so maybe they'll do that down the line. But yeah, Advanced Wars I thought looked very well as well. Um, so between Splatoon, Advanced Wars, and Triangle Strategy, and Kirby, the immediate games were maybe convinced me to pick them up. So I think that's a good direct, and I was interested in what they showed. But then we could take it a step further. We make it a great direct, because there were many surprises. The three big dogs, and a fourth bonus one that I'd like to discuss. The, th the three, though, kind of have a tie to the Wii, which is great, because again, Wii, probably the best Nintendo console ever made. First, let's start with... Let's start with the fun one, Strikers. I never thought in my life we would get another Strikers game. So the fact that we live to see a new Strikers from next level games as well, that makes me so happy. And I know with the Mario Sports games on Switch, there's been some division in terms of people wanting more out of them or not feeling like they're fully realized, half-baked gets thrown around a lot. And I haven't really dove into any of them. I have had some experience with tennis for the free weekends and golf mario super rush that's fun i liked it i liked what i played of it however i understand where people come from and i think they're not wrong that being said mario strikers battle league maybe not as violent as the old ones waluigi's not doing the suck it but like it looks like it's maintaining the like persona that that series carries and the fact that next level is still on it makes me very happy because next level killed it with luigi's mansion and the fact that they're continuing their mario soccer franchise with strikers and it's got that art style it's got that attitude slight attitude compared to like a vanilla nintendo thing now works the gear thing looks interesting i'd be interested to make a team of tanks <laughs> led by donkey kong um online looks cool it, like it's hard to mess up soccer i think there's always been items and the power-up kicks in all of the Strikers games. Like, that's maintaining. They're not throwing a weird wrench in here. I guess you could say gear. But beyond that, I, I would imagine there's going to be a standard mode without gear. The way that Mario Tennis has its basic mode and Mario Golf has its non-Super Rush mode. So, I'm not worried about this one at all. I'm truly feeling the hype for a Mario sports game. And it feels great because Strikers, Baseball, and Hoops are my three favorite Mario sports franchises. And I truly did not think we'd get to see another in any of those for a while. So that made me quite happy. Uh, that's a day one, June 10th. The other game coming out sooner, but later in the show, was a game that I've wanted to see for a long time. Here on Joyclicks, in our Hall of Game, the first two games inducted were Mario 64 and Wii Sports. We all love Wii Sports here. So Nintendo Switch Sports. Ooh, baby. 40 bucks, too. Would it be better if it was in the expansion pack? Yes. Should it be? Yes. Am I going to be held up with $40? No. Because <laughs> I love Switch Sports. I love Wii Sports. And it makes a lot of sense... They get a lot of the classics in there. It's cool that they're adding new things, bringing out, returning things from the other games. No baseball, no boxing. We'll see if anything comes of that. Um, but they are adding golf later this year, which is solid. But between volleyball, which looks super cool as a new addition, tennis, uh, bowling, bowling's the classic one, the sword fighting from uh, Resort, it's a great package. Soccer is an interesting choice, especially with the leg strap. <laughs> like, um, yeah, that that's that's a weird one, but it's one that I, again, seems so obvious that Nintendo would just never do it, but they did it. So that's exciting, and I'll check out that test next week. Got to sign up for that on the fifteenth. But yeah, Switch Sports, what a what a game, man! 
I can't wait. And that's April, end of April. Uh, weird to not have the Miis, because like we still have the Miis, you know? I still, I made a me on my Switch in 2017. Many people did, I believe. <laughs> um, but it was cool to see that uh, Koizumi used his me, you know? Like, that's an option there. A very conflicting style between the Miis and these new avatars. But maybe if they listen, me mode, just flood the game with Miis <laughs> instead of these strange uh, Microsoft avatar looking people. But. Yeah, I, I'm very excited that Switch Sports is a thing, that Wii Sports is coming back in some capacity. And that was a big moment. Big W for the Wii fans. The next one for Wii fans. Because that's the second one. The first one is kind of a, a dub for Wii fans because Mario Strikers was last released on the Wii. It's a stretch, I know, but go with me. Uh, the third one. This might be my biggest thing out of the Direct, which is surprising because I got a Strikers game. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think they might stop calling it Mario Kart 8 and just, it's already an infinity sign. Just t tilt it a little bit more. And this is their Mario Kart platform because five years later, they're doing it. Mario Kart DLC, which I think their strategy for is surprisingly reasonable. 25 bucks for 48 courses over the next year and a half. That's an entire new Mario Kart game worth of tracks. That's like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe 2, because 8 already had a lot of old tracks. And yes, there are remasters coming in this pack, but for me and many others, there are going to be new tracks for us because Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game, I've seen some really cool stuff for, but I do not want to interact with that experience on my phone. So the fact that they're bringing in courses from the mobile game and all of these remastered courses are going to be using the mechanics of Mario Kart 8, the zero gravity elements of the tracks, is fantastic. I have 50 hours of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's the best kart racer ever made, period. Don't at me. Uh, so just having more stuff to do there is great. Because listen, love the game, love playing it, but I have raced those tracks again and again and again and again. <laughs> So, having 48 new ones is great. The best part about this, I think, and I've seen Division on this and I understand both sides of it, is the racer pass, sorry, the cart track pass, it's not racers, is included in the expansion pack tier of the Nintendo Switch Online subscription, which I am in. I share a family plan with 10 friends, so it is eight bucks, no, eight, eight friends. It's 10 bucks a year for me to have access to the expansion pack tier. So like Animal Crossing New Horizons Happy Home Paradise, Mario Kart 8 Battle Pass, I forget what it's called, is included in that expansion pack tier. And I've seen some people say, I don't feel like this is a good deal if it's just DLC, which I get. I think the reason... I feel good about this is because one, I'm excited for it already. And it could just because I'm a Nintendo fan that liked the service already for giving me a retro catalog. Obviously I want things to be better on it. I still haven't touched Ocarina of Time because it's a mess, but yeah, I like, I think something that needs to be taken into account is the two games that got their expansion packs in there are maybe not for everybody, but they're the top two best selling switch games. Kart 8 is the best-selling Switch game. Nearly one in every two Switch owners has that. Animal Crossing is right behind it by, like, a couple million. So I understand these games might not be for everybody. Maybe you don't want that out of the pack. But, like, a, a good number of Switch owners have access to this, these base games and would maybe be convinced to get the higher tier. Now, when they eventually give DLC for a game that I don't have. I never played Splatoon 2. If they had the Octo expansion, will I feel differently? Maybe. But the thing is, it's like I feel for my 10 bucks a year, I'm still good with the offering I have. So the cart expansion I think is good. Awesome news. Glad they're finally doing it. I'm very excited to play more Mario Kart this year. 
And uh, yeah, Mario Kart 9 doesn't exist. It never will. <laughs> Not on this console. So that was great. So was everything else we've talked about so far. But the, the stinger, the one more thing that really surprised me is Xenoblade Chronicles 3 where I am about 10 hours deep into Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Had to put it down to keep up with more relevant releases, but it's it's growing to have a special place in my heart that not many games can get into. Because when I played my first couple hours of Chronicles, it gave me the feelings that Kingdom Hearts gives me. Like, Kingdom Hearts 2 is my favorite game of all time, and... Not many games can get close to giving me the feelings Kingdom Hearts does. Xenoblade's getting damn close. So, Chronicles 1, I think, is this like, magical experience that I really want to savor and get through. 2 is a different story. But 3 looks great. Looks beautiful. Expansive world. Really great character designs. Uh, intriguing story. From what I hear, they're bridging gaps between Xenoblade 1 and 2. So maybe I have to come to terms with things and actually play Xenoblade 2. But that's out in September and uh, is very exciting. So looking forward to playing more Chronicles 1. Looking forward to picking up a lot of these games day one. I think confidently I can say I'm day one on Strikers, Switch Sports, Xenoblade if I'm caught up. Which I, I, I will be, at least with the first game. So when we look at this Direct and what it achieved, right... We got a good look at most of Nintendo's year. March has Kirby and Strategy. April is Advance Wars and Switch Sports. May, I think, is open at the moment. June, we have Strikers. July, we have Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, Splatoon is set for summer, so that could be August, maybe, or also a July game. And then Xenoblade in September. That leaves October, November, December for the vacancies from this presentation. So E3, I do imagine we're going to get a big blowout for Breath of the Wild, big blowout for Bayonetta 3. And as long as those games don't slip, those are the games that will fill out October, November, December. So as it stands, maybe there's another surprise. I think we know Nintendo's here. And for this Direct, there were a lot of surprises. I think it's very rare to be surprised by many things in a Direct. Uh, but this one did it, and it gave us a good look at what's ahead. I really enjoyed this Nintendo Direct. I thought it was a better start to the year Direct than we got last year. A lot of great stuff, a lot of great things that surprised me, like I said, that turned me around on maybe picking them up. And uh, yeah, I think this is a real solid Direct. I'm curious to hear what you all think. Am I off base with all of these things? Was it a, ba a bad one? I know Nintendo Directs can be pretty divisive in terms of like if they were good or not depending on what's offered. But like I said, for the Wii fans, for the strategy RPG fans, we're eating good this year, um, which is great. For those that don't enjoy these games, um, I, I mean, I feel like this game had, I mean, this Direct had something for everybody. Like Earthbound was here. So maybe give, give one of these a shot, you know? If, if you're new to strategy games, and I haven't played this, but from what I've seen of it, I do love the style. And I, like I said, I feel like it's a bit more simple than Fire Emblem. Maybe try Advance Wars, you know? Give it give it a shot. It's a modern day. There's no social link stuff. It's just commanding. It's just commanding and executing commands, you know? So, good direct, great direct even. I'm very happy with it. I'm gonna probably dive into that prologue demo of Triangle Strategy after a Pokemon session. But yeah, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought of the Direct. Let me know what your favorite game was. Are you nervous for Strikers at all? I'm not. Next level, confidence. Nintendo acquired them for a reason. So that's it for me. Stay safe. Hang around. Uh, we got more Nintendo stuff coming up soon. Pokemon Legends, my first Mon. We got a few episodes of that, if you haven't heard of it before. Myself and Jack Martin. Jack is a gamer who had never played Pokemon before 2019. We've documented his journey through the series. We did Red and Blue, Crystal, Emerald. Took a bit of a break. Now we're jumping all the way to Legends. Got two episodes out so far. New one probably coming next week, so look forward to that. But that's it. Thanks for hanging out. I like Nintendo. I'm sure you do too if you watch this. You can find me here, everywhere. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. 